mixed heritage women have always been my favorite. Like, I don't think I've ever fallen in love with a woman that wasn't mixed. Really? And the debate did that to me. Really? Because it's something you get. I, I, and I, I feel like that way about life, too. This conversation with Too Short and Sweetie resurfaced yesterday on Twitter, where Too Short talked with Sweetie about how mixed women is his favorite, how he never fell in love with a fully black woman, and how if two ugly people from different races came together and they made a baby, how the baby would be beautiful. Girl, like, you can't make this shit up. No, men like Too Short voluntarily come online and share with the world how white supremacy has been chokeholding and slam dunking in their asses since colonialization. They come online and voluntarily embarrass their dark and black skinned mamas and aunties and grandmamas who breastfed them, who love them, who cherish them, right? In this day and age, they will confidently come online and fetishize, mix, or children that do not look like them. And it is actually scary. And I'm gonna get to Sweetie in a second, but I feel like y'all didn't put enough pressure on Too Short. Y'all ain't do that. This man is having a conversation with a 28 year old young woman his 55 year old ass having a conversation with a 28 year old woman expressing that he has never been in love with a fully black woman and that California the Bay did that to him because a lot of the women in California are mixed. And I took a little break from this type of commentary because, you know, I'm in love, y'all. Like, I got a good man. Like, <laughs> I took a break, but I'm finna be on y'all asses now because it's unprovoked. It's unprovoked. You talking to Sweetie, talk to Sweetie. Don't talk about us. Don't talk about nobody else. Talk, 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 talk to Sweetie. Don't, don't talk about us, okay? <laughs> we, ain't, we ain't in this. Now, now, how did I get in this? I swear, every time I turn around, every blood clot time, I'm like, well, how do we get in that? Well, well, well what that had to do with us? We over here. Oh, my. Y'all are obsessed. I'm Not in all of my mixed adventures, child. <laughs> now, I feel a lot of ways about this, right? And I'm gonna be honest with y'all because y'all my babies, y'all my unicorns. So I, I, I have no choice but to keep it real with y'all. I feel a couple ways about this, right? And it's just because I'm a passionate person. Obviously, this is the commentary that I do. Um, this is something that has been plaguing black women. So this is something that we talk about on this channel. Um, I do understand that colorism, anti-blackness, self-hate, white supremacy, it's not something that I would say maybe the average person speaks about on a regular, right? They probably see some tweets about it. They probably hear some conversations about it. They're probably against it, but it's not something that they are necessarily passionate about. So on one hand, you know, I can definitely see Sweetie is crawling out of her skin. She's like, oh my God, this conversation is not happening. But black men <laughs> will bull you into a corner, okay? And the conversation will happen because in order for them to put you on a pedestal, they have to step on us. There's no other way for them to do it. There's no other way for men, especially of today, to compliment other women without stepping and shitting on other women. So in this instance, it's uncomfortable. She's getting the praise. He's basically telling her, you know, she is the preference. She is the prize. She is the gold. She is the winner. And she's uncomfortable. <laughs> He's making her uncomfortable. I see it. He is a man in the industry with some sort of power, some sort of status. Y'all said that he's a legend in California, I guess, child. So, you know, this is a, a also a work environment for her, right? So how many of you have been at work and conversations come up that make you uncomfortable? You know, you can't just attack and, you know, jump down the throat. You have to be politically correct. So I see in this instance that Saweetie was being politically correct. 
without being aggressive about the situation because men don't like that, okay? You got to tiptoe. They call us emotional and fragile, but you got to tiptoe on their feelings. So without being aggressive or overly, you know, outspoken about it, she said, you know, you made comments that black women who are mixed are beautiful, but black women who are not mixed, who have their own black blood are beautiful as well. This Tumblr question resurfaced from years ago as well. Um, and someone said, Saweetie, do you think dark skinned women can be pretty? She said, I was raised by dark skinned women. So I find this question insulting. I don't think they can be pretty. I think they are pretty. Now, it's just so interesting to me how, you know, a woman like Saweetie can say, listen, like y'all not about to sit here and talk about black and dark skinned women. I have black and dark skinned women in my family whom I admire, whom I respect, who I think is beautiful, you know, who I look up to. You're not finna play in my face and be colorist and be anti black and you know you ain't gonna dump that over here you're not gonna step on them to get to me we're not doing that and this man who literally came from two black parents you know a black woman can sit up and say well they're not the prize you are it's just it's just a comparison for me i had to make that note and i told y'all before and i'm gonna keep telling y'all again man's rejection is what man's rejection is who Man's rejection is where, huh? Huh? <laughs> Man's rejection is God's protection. So I Googled him, right? And his bio says, Todd Anthony Shaw, better known by the stage name Too Short, is an American rapper and record producer. Shaw became famous in the West Coast hip hop scene in the late 1980s with lyrics often based on pimping. With lyrics often based on pimping. With lyrics often based on pipping, sorry, I glitched, and promiscuity. Oh. But also drug culture and street survival. 55 years old, height 5'7. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you him. So I'm grateful for God's protection. Um, I am, you know, I feel bad for the preferences. And actually, let me kind of divert this conversation, right? So I've been seeing an awakening. I've been seeing an awakening of the preferences. They're fed up, black, black, black men, hi. They're not happy with y'all. The preferences are speaking up. They're saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. We want God's protection too. Okay, let's listen. All right, I'm tapping into the chat because I'm so fucking sick of seeing these videos. Black men, I'm talking to y'all. Stop coming for black women and then dragging Latinas in on it to justify why you won't date black women. Like I always say, you can have a motherfucking preference and you don't have to dog out your own people to justify that preference. Have your fucking preference and go about your fucking date job. Because I'm going to tell you right now, huh, us Latinas, we're not any easier because we're going to cuss you out in two languages. We're going to call you on your bullshit in two languages. So don't even come over here with that bullshit. I just don't understand why you cannot just, again, have your preference and go about your business. Why do you always have to drag black women into the chat? They not doing shit. You mad because they didn't want your ass? You haven't dealt with the one that broke your heart back in the day? You ain't dealt with your traumas when it comes to the way your mama treated you, your grandmother, your auntie, your sister, whatever, what have you. You haven't dealt with that shit. Then you want to get mad when a black woman doesn't want to put up with your shit. And they make you level up. They make you better. Like they're so solid. They be holding people down that they care for. Yo, ten toes down. I don't understand why you got to sit there and, oh, I like this and I like that because black women this, black women that. What the fuck? No, no, let's call it what it is. You're not capable of certain things, so you're projecting onto black women for your shortcomings. And me, gente, Latinas, I'm talking to y'all. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Just because a black man says his piece on what he thinks about a black woman does not mean that you enter the chat to piggyback off of his bullshit. Cut the shit, mamas, because you are no better. You're not. And Latinas, can y'all stop taking it as a fucking compliment when a black man says that you're easier? How insecure are you that 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 gets you all giddy inside? What the fuck? Wow. Y'all could go be boo-boo the food together, apparently. Again, have your preference, but leave everybody else out of it. Go! It's extremely right. hard. Not in like a woe is me way, but in like a mind puzzle way. Because it manifests itself in like three ways. The one that everybody knows, the blatant one. I can't date no dark skin, nappy head, you know, that whole nine yard. That's 
type of men I can't touch with a 10 foot pole. Get away from me. Because the features that you love about me so much are African derived. Better anyway. Then there's the more less obvious. The one that dates everybody. Dark skin, light skin, not his race, with well within his race, you name it. Then you go down his page and you realize that he's only ever posted light skin or white women. You're like, but I know that you dated this dark skin girl, but you never posted her. Deviation of this is he's in a public relationship with a mixed woman, cheats on her with a full race dark skin woman, and ignorant light skin women uses as fuel to hate dark skin women. And the third one, you guys are in a relationship, you get really comfortable, they don't seem colorist, but let's say you start asking like what do they like about you, or maybe you guys talk about kids, and all they can point out is your hair, your skin color, and your eyes. And so there is now an influx of the preferences, the white Latinas, the mixed race women, even white Caucasian women coming out and sharing their experiences, you know, when encountering dating black men, you know, becoming baby mamas to black men or just being black man's preferences. They don't like it. And don't get me wrong. A lot of them do. But in this commentary, we're talking about the women who don't like it. And I feel like sometimes we don't ever really hear their perspective because they're usually silent about this. But they're coming out in droves saying they don't like it. And I really like the part in with that Nina's commentary where she said, you know, and to the Latina women who think it's cute, like how insecure are you if a man is telling you that he's choosing you because you are easier? You don't offer any challenges. <laughs> you let him do what he wants. You're easy to manipulate. That's scary. And y'all find that attractive. Work on that. Namiko also spoke out about the blatant colorism she experiences when dating or just speaking with black men. And the comments were really interesting. One male said, what? So you think that when a man approach you, it's only because you're light skinned? Women be projecting their own thoughts on men. Another male said, y'all really be making an issue from everything. We don't have enough problems or something. One of the preferences commented, my ex bought me skin lightening soap and he's dark as charcoal. They really hate themselves. And it's just interesting to me because when black women who have been saying this for decades, when we speak about this, you know, it's always, oh, you're just jealous or you're just mad or you're just ugly. Right. That's <laughs> that's the responses. Um, meanwhile, now they're gaslighting the preferences. They're saying, oh, well, it, you, you think it's just because of your light skin? Well, maybe it's because you're the colorist. Maybe it's your projection of something, some type of hate because you're... What? So now y'all telling the preferences that it's their fault that y'all are you? When will y'all take accountability for the fuckery? When? Then they'll belittle the whole conversation. Oh, there's bigger problems in the world. Are you working on those bigger problems? Are you fixing those bigger problems? Because that's what men do. They work, they build, they fix. Are you working and building on those quote unquote bigger problems? No. No, you're not. So we're going to talk about this problem right here, right now. And now, as this generation of Black women, majority has washed their hands, has stepped back. <laughs> we said, we don't care. Y'all do what y'all do. Live in bliss with your preferences. So now the preferences are the faces of the struggle. The baby mamas, the abuse victims, the murder victims. Now they're seeing what we've been saying was not a lie. And they're speaking out. And many of them see the self-hate, the anti-blackness. You know, they see the white supremacy, the KKK. I've been telling y'all these niggas is KKK. They see the KKK eking, eking out of their pores. You can't have a conversation with these KKKs without some type of slander towards the womb they came from. Because they're so invested in whiteness, white skin, white women, white, 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 white. They just hate themselves. They hate their women. They hate. And it's not all. It's not all. Let me be clear. When I do commentary like this, you know, some of the quote unquote good men, they get offended. But I'm not talking to y'all. And quite frankly, y'all are not loud enough. Y'all are not loud enough. Y'all need to be drowning out the sounds of these colorist anti-black black men. But y'all won't do that. 
y'all y'all won't do it so we got to do it you know but then y'all come in here and get offended if you're such a good black man you will be as loud as even louder than the pro black women on this platform if you're such a good black man instead of coming in my comment section you would be in two shorts comment section you would be in Kodak's comment section. You would be in Chris, Brown, Chris Brown's comment section when they are literally kicking black women out of clubs. They're kicking black women out of clubs because of their skin tones in 2020 and up. This is not going anywhere. But what's happening is the preferences are adding to the conversation now before they were silent. Now they're adding to the conversation because now what? They need child support. Now they're being, their asses are being kicked and whooped. Now they're just being used for their features and dumped for the next, for the next woman with the, next, the same features. So now, now they're speaking up. And I'm here for it, honestly. <laughs> I'm here for it. Y'all let me know what you thought of this whole conversation, honey. Honey, let me know. How did you feel about Saweetie's response to 2 Chainz's blatant colorism? How do you feel about the preferences now speaking out and saying, listen, these are our encounters with black men and we don't like it. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and I will see you beautiful black queens at the next one. It has left me widely feeling unappreciated for who I am as a person. Although light-skinned women and mixed women are celebrated, I understand that. I definitely understand my own privilege here. But I just know that it's not genuine. You know what I mean? It's just really creepy and predatory. Very animalistic, like breeding. And I can't help to feel that the person doesn't even love me for who I am, but they just love me for what type of children I can give them, how they can flex with me off to their homies, and how submissive he believes me to be.